when it comes to scoring goals, Chelsea have not been particularly fluid. And it's been like this for a while. It's nothing new to Graham Potter. It's something which Tuchel suffered. And there's that alleged curse for anybody who wears the number nine jersey. And it's been like that for a while. And you think of how many strikers have failed at Chelsea Football Club. And I know they've won trophies since. Uh, Champions League being the biggest of them. Do you think they're going to go out and try to, try to buy a new striker? I mean, what club doesn't want to go out and buy... Well, maybe City, actually, but w want to go out and get a new striker, someone that's going to score goals. Every team wants a centre-forward that's scoring goals. Chelsea, it's, it's not... that They are creating opportunities. They may not be you know, standout chances, but they are creating opportunities to score. I think it's just going to take a little bit longer for Potter to... Because we, we were trying to work out, you know, exactly mm. the shape and how many were playing here and that. But he, he, he manipulates the team all the time. They're free-flowing. They change, yeah. interact everywhere. Loftus-Cheek played about three or four different positions today. But sometimes you just need a little bit of structure and you need a little bit of something to work out exactly yeah. where the ball's... Yeah. If the ball's on the right, where do you want your centre for? Where do you want your, your left wing or someone to tuck in to to have that, if the cross is coming, where should you, yeah. you be? I think that's just where they are at the moment. They're still in the process of sorting yeah. all of that out. And they change yeah. the team yeah. quite a lot as well because yeah. of competitions and, and the amount of fixtures. So yeah. it's, it's just going to take a little bit more time. I, I, th I think it's all very well to have a very fluid formation that, you know, when, when you've got a back four, you, you very easily shift into like a, a pushed on right back and, and the other three come across. So suddenly you're playing with a back three with an advanced right back. I just think that when it's not going your way, you need to get back to a base position, which is, you know, it's 4-4-2, it's 4-3-3, four, four, what, whatever it is. But, but you need a base to come back to. And talking about the goalkeepers' union, as you've done a few times, I think that's absolutely key with goalkeepers. You know, when they're having a difficult time, they just have to go back to the real basics. But with the modern game, the coaches still want them to play out from the back. So, you know, we saw earlier with, with Mendy when he tried to pass the ball out to the right back and it got intercepted, it was tight. And for me, the basics are you, you hit somebody wide right up the park. You don't try and, and play out from the back because you've come on as a sub and it's all a little bit difficult for you. You, you go back to the basics. Um, and I think that's my, my feeling with Chelsea today. It wasn't really going their way, but where was their, their base position that they could steady the ship and then start to get back into the game? Yeah, but again, I want to get that topic of goals. It's the hardest thing to do in football, yeah. I believe, scoring goals. But you could say that they find a, a stable shape, a, a stable starting eleven. There's been a lot of changes in the Grand Potter, like you mm. rightly pointed out. But do you think there's someone there that's screaming at you that's going to get 20 league goals in a season? Is there or not? Um, for, for me at the moment, just the way that they are, I wouldn't say there's someone there that's going to get you 20. No. I think there could be three or four players that could get you 10, potentially. I think that's... They, they, they're going to have to spread their goals around the team rather than having that one focal like point. Like City last year? Like City, yeah. For, I mean, you know, everyone would like to play like City. They, they are expansive and free-flowing, but they all know where they're going and how the yeah. team is functioning. Yeah. I think that's, that's the only the slight difference at the moment with Chelsea. I think yeah. at the moment they're, they're just still trying to work out where I should be, what should yeah. I do, where should we be running, are we keeping the ball, are we, yeah. we counter-attacking, are we not, yeah. are we playing a bit more possession? I think that's just at the moment they're just trying to work it out and it's, it's really hard because there's so many games and they've got to compete with Cup, they've got to compete with Champions League, so it, they're changing players, formations mm. all of the time to, yeah. to, to com combat that. Yeah, I think a good example of one individual, and Matt and I spoke about this when we were watching the game, and that's Raheem Sterling. So, for me, when he was at Manchester City, he had a, a fairly defined role within the team, dependent upon where, exactly where he was playing. You know, quite choreographed by Pep. You know, when we're here, you do that. And it, it really was quite um, fixed in a solid template. Now he's at Chelsea. Actually, he's a bit freer. And now he has to make the decisions a little bit more. And, and I thought Sterling overall for a player with his, you know, abilities, was disappointing today. Well, it, 
I, I believe the Chelsea fans have been disappointed with Sterling since he joined the mm. club. It, it's yeah. nothing new today. And it's a no, bit no, worrying. not for Chelsea. But so what I'm saying was when he was at Manchester City within a, a framework that is a little bit more organised yes. and yeah. solid, you know, they play f wonderful football, Man City, but they play very organised football. Sorry, I, I, I mean, the Chelsea fans have been yeah. disappointed since Sterling joined their club. There yes. hasn't been a performance that makes you sit up and say, wow, Raheem Sterling. Well, he's their top goal scorer, I think. For now. But he's yeah. only with three. Yeah. That's so, the problem. And again, that's the question about finding a goal scorer. I know Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is there, but he's in and out of the starting eleven, and he's not getting any uh, younger either, let's be honest. I don't know, I'm just thinking Ronaldo again, because he was linked in the <laughs> summer, wasn't he? Uh, Todd Bowley, the, the, the new owner, the, the, seemed to the have one an thing for Chelsea, if you're saying about it, they, they don't, you know, they, they had that one chance today where they put the cross in and have it scored. Mm. They don't necessarily play with put crosses in the box because they Havertz is the only one really that that's in the box yeah. ready for the for but the is, cross to come in is Ronaldo as a Ronaldo, goal scorer a step up of the Havertz as a goal scorer and put, putting the crosses in but they don't that's they they get it wide they come back they go inside they play inside it's not get it wide put the cross in that's not yeah. the way that Chelsea play at the moment so but if you do get Ronaldo yeah. you have to do that so it will be a, again a change of system, change of ideas yeah. and, and structure in that team. Yeah, I, I think there must be a, a temptation from Chelsea's point of view to, to look at Ronaldo. Yeah, for sure. The um, ownership won a marquee play, I believe. And yeah. so, well, there's not many bigger marquee <laughs> signings yeah. than Cristiano Ronaldo. And yeah. he gets Champions League football in return as well. Even if he is a squad player, it maybe yeah. he's just using Europe. I've, yeah. I, I don't know, but it could yeah. work, maybe. You don't seem convinced. I, I, I just don't know. I, I, I think it, it would have to change a lot of the way that, as I said, that they, they need to be putting crosses in the box, otherwise Ronaldo's useless. You know, you need that product for him to go on to get the end of the cross. And if they're, if they're not putting crosses in and they're all tippy-tappy, you know, you, 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 that's why they, 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 they do that, because they haven't had a, a recognised centre-forward for a while. Like, they've played with a false nine, they've played with Havertz, they've played... But maybe... You know, so they, they means, do, yeah, they do need it. But, but maybe it, it, it means they need to shake things up a bit. I know he won't fit a Potter system, not from what I've seen anyway, but were they competitive you're, last year? You're pushing, you're pushing it anyway. Yeah, well, I know they, got, <laughs> they, they were competitive last year because they got to some cup finals, didn't they? Yeah. But they lacked that cutting yes, edge they did, yeah. against Liverpool yeah. on two yeah. occasions. In if penalties. you're going to put the ball in the box then the, you know, for goal scoring, there's not much better than Ronaldo. Yeah, I think, as I said a moment ago, I think there must be a temptation there. Um, but it's, it's like everything, isn't it? You know, you, you bring Ronaldo in, for example, to Chelsea, you know, where does it, or what does it tip in the wrong direction somewhere else within the club, within the group? You know, th there's been a, you know, a lot of talk that Ronaldo, and, and I think rightly so, Ronaldo's been a bit disruptive at Manchester United this season, hasn't he? You know, does he go in to Chelsea if that happens and, and become slightly disruptive there as well? I think it's like everything, isn't it? Recruitment. It's, yeah. it's a difficult one, and to get it right is, you know, not easy. Yeah, Harry Kane, his name was linked as well, but obviously the rivalry between Spurs and Chelsea, it's a bit yeah. harder to see that happening. Yeah, I can't, I can't see that one, uh, to be honest. I think at the moment, you know, Harry Kane's fully committed to, to what he's, you know, the project, I suppose, at Tottenham, but you never know what might happen there with with Conte and the performances. Obviously, they've they've come back today and, and got a vital win, which you know from two 0 down is is was impressive. So th there's that, but he he's sort of focused on playing for Spurs at the moment. I think. Well, it's just that I'm asking this now, and I I know it's still October, but we're going to be breaking for the World Cup very soon and then there's six weeks of no Premier League football and then there's what one two games and suddenly the January transfer window is open it's really mm. going to be well it's open faster. for someone to do extremely well in the World Cup to get themselves a move somewhere Possibly. I think that's that's an option